Let's talk again about salary sacrificing. Some of our salary for an electric vehicle, but also let's talk about it from an employer's perspective. And also let me show you a few tweaks I've made to the salary sacrifice spreadsheet. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel folks, JD here again. If you're new to the channel, please do hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to get to 5,000 subscribers in the next month or so, so I'd really appreciate that. This channel's all about car finance, hence the name Car Finance Simplified. Um, telling you about PCPs, leasing, and more recently I've been talking about electric vehicles and, and cheap ways to lease them, and that's what we're gonna talk again about today. So a few people have emailed me recently. Somebody emailed me suggesting um, a couple of tweaks that I could make to the salary sacrifice spreadsheets. That's what we're gonna talk about first. And then also somebody emailed me who said that they worked in payroll for a company and they weren't entirely sure how to set up a scheme. And that's what we're gonna talk about as well. So going over to the spreadsheet, this is an unreleased version. Anybody who's subscribed to this spreadsheet will get a new version of this. If you haven't yet subscribed for a one-off donation of £10, if you send me an email um, to here, uh, you will get payment details and you can get as many updates as I care to make. And a lot of people are starting to find the spreadsheet useful. Not only this one, but also... Um, on the PCP spreadsheet, which enables you to compare deals and work out settlement and voluntary termination and that kind of thing as well. However, over to this spreadsheet. So what I've done is somebody emailed me, as I said, and they said, have you thought about setting up a scenario for somebody who is fortunate enough, and I'm not including myself in this, to earn over £100,000 a year? And the reason for that is there are even more savings to be made. That is because if you earn uh, over £100,000 a year, for every £2 over, your personal allowance is reduced by £1, which means you pay tax earlier. Which means if you can salary sacrifice some or all of your salary to bring your gross pay under £100,000 a year, you can save even more money. And as we'll talk about when we talk about the employer's side, if your employer is generous enough to pass on all or some of their company national insurance savings that they make on your salary sacrifice, you can actually see savings of up to 70%, believe it or not. So what I've done on the spreadsheet on this unreleased version is I've added an adjusted tax code a little bit. So what happens is, look, if I put in our standard tax code for 2122, which is 1257L, and let's say we've got a salary of £99,000 a year. It does nothing. So the adjusted tax code is still 1257L. However, a little bit of a question for you before I enter the press the enter button. If I were to earn £102,000 a year, what would the personal allowance change to? I'll give you five seconds to work it out. It would reduce by, yes, you've guessed it, a thousand pounds a year. Because we've oh, we've earned over our hundred thousand pounds threshold by two thousand pounds, our personal answer has dropped by one thousand pounds. Now, that means if you earn a hundred and twenty five thousand pounds a year or more, you effectively get almost zero in your personal answer, and that's because. £25,000 over, divide that by two, 12,500. So our tax code here, look, is shown as just 7L because we've reduced our personal allowance by £12,500. So if you think about it, if you're in this fortunate position, if you were to salary sacrifice your salary so that your new growth, sorry, if you were to salary sacrifice part of your salary such that your new growth salary is £100,000 or less, you're going to save even more money on your electric vehicle. So, if we were to say earn £112,000 a year, our tax code in this example reduces by £6,000. Okay, so it's now reduced to 657L or 6570L. So we're going to pay tax at £6,000 a year earlier than somebody not earning over £100,000. So if we go to the salary sacrifice tab and say, OK, well, my gross salary is uh, £112,000. 
I'm going to salary sacrifice £12,000 of that. And what I just need to do is do that. Okay, so gross salary 112000 and new salary for purposes of tax and NI is now £100,000. And therefore, we have taken £12,000 of that money and we are giving it out to our company effectively so they can lease a car. So £1,000 a month. You might get something like a, a decent murky QC. You might get a Porsche Taycan. So look what happens now. The tax code has now gone back up to 1257L. So we're saving 20% of £6,000. So we're saving another £1,200 a year. That car log, believe it or not, is now only going to cost us £380 a month in our net pay. 62% saving. Our net pay on 112000 a year, ignoring any pension contributions, is about 5937 as it says there. We salary sacrifice £1,000 a month to pay for an electric vehicle. Our net pay is now 5557, so we've only lost 380 pounds a month. Okay, that is quite phenomenal. And to be honest, I wasn't really aware of that until this kind viewer dropped me a line. Is the microphone working? Yes, it is. Sorry, I couldn't see my light there. I just wanted to make sure you could hear me. Now, and that will happen all the way between 100,000 and 125,000. What the spreadsheet will also now do is calculate 45% tax. So once you earn over 150,000 pounds a year, not only have you effectively lost your personal allowance, but you now pay tax at 45p in the pound for everything over that 150k. So that's what this spreadsheet will do. So if I earn 125,000 a year, look, We've now got, so that's 1.25 million, 125,000 a year. We've now got a tax code of 70 pounds a year, so effectively nothing. That car is still costing us 380 pounds. The difference, look, is 6349 earning 125K, 5969 salary sacrificing that kind of amount. It's crazy, it's crazy. So that's what the spreadsheet will now do. Something else that the spreadsheet will now do as well is if you go down to your monthly running costs and you're trying to work out whether it's worth having a car allowance or a salary sacrifice scheme, I've also put an allowance in so that you can now choose what your mileage rate is. It might not be the standard 45p up to 10,000 miles a year followed by 25p, I think it is, after that. It might be different. And also, you might not get mileage allowance for your personal miles. So what the spreadsheet will also enable you to do is go, OK, well, yeah, I get a mileage allowance. Yes, I do 500 miles a month, but I actually do 1,000 miles in total a month. So it will show you how much you can get for those 500 business miles a month, but not, obviously, for the 500 personal miles. So that's kind of the new addition to the spreadsheet, which I think is working and demonstrates that you can now effectively save 62%. One other thing that the spreadsheet will do, as you can see here, look, it says company NI saving passed on, question mark. Now, when you salary sacrifice a certain amount, for tax and NI purposes, you are lowering your gross salary. So not only does the member of staff save tax and NI, the employer saves their company NI contributions on that amount salary sacrificed. So in this case, look, we've salary sacrificed £1,000 a month. So the company saves £138 a month in company NI because company NI is 13.8%. So what the spreadsheet also will let me do is go, OK, do you know what? We're going to be really generous. We're going to pass on all of that company national insurance because we're not losing anything we're saving it and we're going to give that to the employee as well 70 percent saving comes down to 29996 in this example versus a thousand pounds a month now you can't physically as an employer pass on 138 pounds a month because two ways you can do this you can either go okay we're going to drop the salary sacrifice amount by £138 in this case, or 
we're going to keep the salary sacrifice amount the same, in this case £1,000 a month, but pay the employee £138 a month more. Well, what's going to happen in their bottom line? Because you're effectively giving them £138 a month salary boost, they're still going to pay income tax and national insurance on it. So for £138, you're probably going to save, you're probably going to make 100 quid a month or thereabouts. Okay, So you can't give the entire company NI saving back to the employee unless you give it them in a brown envelope in cash but obviously you can't do that so you've still got to put it back through payroll what about then um, as an employer what do you need to know well let's take an example if you were to get a quote from a company for a fully maintained car they will usually quote two things they will quote a rental figure which is subject to VAT at 20% and a maintenance figure and that usually includes standard servicing, tyres, etc. And that might be £50 a month plus VAT. So, how much money is that lease company going to physically take from you? Well, they're going to take £550 plus VAT, which is £660. However, providing you're VAT registered, you can claim back 100% of the VAT on the rental element and 50% of the VAT back on the rental. You can only claim 100% VAT on a car if it's just a pool car. So it's only used for business purposes. It's a pool car. It's not taken home in the evening by an employee. It's left in the car park. It's collected by a person. They take it to site. They bring it back. They go home in their own car. So in this case, because we're, we're, we're letting an employee salary sacrifice and an, an element to buy or lease an electric vehicle such that they can use it for personal use, you can claim about 50% of the VAT. So even though £660 in this case will be taken from the company by the lease company, we can claim back 10% VAT, so half the VAT on the rental figure, and all of the 20% VAT on the maintenance figure. So the rental VAT back is obviously £50, 10% of £500, and the maintenance VAT claim back, if you like, is £10, which is £20, sorry, I'm getting confused myself, which is 20% of the £50, okay? So the effective rental, you will see this, the effective rental is the amount that the employee is salary sacrificing because you are claiming £60 in this case and VAT back. So £600 is salary sacrificed. What does this mean in terms of a company saving then? Well, as I just said, you will save... 13.8% company NI on the effective rental that is salary sacrifice, which in this case is £82.80 a month or £993.60. And as I said, you could choose to pass that back on to the employee as a salary boost if you wish. However, you can't really pass the total amount on unless you want to be slightly out of pocket because, as I said, there is a tiny bit of company NI on a benefit. So if you salary sacrifice or provide a benefit such as private health care, gym memberships, etc., that value will be subject to 13.8% company NI. Now on an electric vehicle, as I've said before, for the tax year 21-22, the benefiting kind rate is 1% of the P11D value. So let's say this lease relates to a car which has a value, a P11D value of £40,000 per year. For tax year 21-22, that equates to 1%. So we take £40,000, get 1% of it, and that gives us £400. So the company NI that we will have to pay on that benefit is £55.20 a year. I hope you're following this. Please rewind if you're not. And that is 13.8% of £400. The £400 is 1% of the P11 D value of the vehicle. So in effect, if you think about it, the, the overall company saving, if you didn't pass anything on to the employee, is the company NI saving made on the salary sacrifice, which was £600 a year, times by 13... Sorry, £600 a month times by 13.8% which is £993.60 a year, less the company national insurance on the benefit in kind, £55.20. So the company is £938.40 a year better off, or £78.20. So as you can see, 
Offering a, an electric vehicle salary sacrifice scheme at this moment in time because the BIK rates are so low also has a saving to the company of, in this case, nearly a thousand pounds a year. On the spreadsheet though, we can say, well, actually, we're not going to pass on the entire amount. Let's pass on half. So we'll have a bit as a company. We'll give the employee a little bit back as well. If we pass on 50% of the company NI saving, this is excluding the, the company NI payable on the benefiting kind. We can pass on... <laughs> I hope that was interesting. If you are a company thinking of setting a scheme up like this, please do drop me a line. Um, obviously, I can't offer you any advice, but I can offer you my friendly assistance, as I always say. I hope that was quite useful. Certainly shows that if you are fortunate enough to earn a significant salary and you choose to salary sacrifice to purchase an EV, you will make massive savings. As I've said, please do uh, fling me an email if you want a copy of the PCP settlement spreadsheet or the latest electric vehicle salary sacrifice spreadsheet that you've just seen. Please do hit that subscribe button if you've not already done so. I'd really appreciate it. Give this video a thumbs up um, and I will see you very soon. Thanks for watching. Take care.